some one of them paper, and I know that we're also going to go to you for the first question, but just before that, because I think I almost know what your question is about, <laughs> <Sure you do>. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to lead into it with a little, um, little segue and talk a little bit about money before we lead into your question. <laughs> so, how many of you believe that money is not spiritual? Or how many of you were brought up to believe that it is not spiritual to charge money? And maybe you're now, today, you're in, nowadays after you know, all the work you've done, you're enlightened and you know it's okay to make money, but how many of you grew up with that belief that it is not spiritual to make money? Okay, quite a lot of you. Yes, as did I. Quite a lot of you. What's interesting with that paradigm that it's not spiritual to make money, at the same time, you were probably brought up to believe that you can't make money from following your heart or following your passion and doing what you love, right? Right. Yeah, how many of you believe that? Yeah. So, so there you go. So first of all, if you follow your heart or follow your passion, that means that you're not supposed to make money from that. You're supposed to do that stuff as a hobby or for free or as a service for other people. So what does that mean? It means that the things you do to make money have to be stuff that feel, has to feel like work. It has to feel like hard work. If it doesn't feel like hard work, then you shouldn't be making money from it. That's what we have been brought up to believe. So where it gets interesting is that uh, is that so a lot of people are out there making money from things without following their heart. They're making money just from doing things following careers. And our paradigm completely accepts that, where we actually believe that, um, that it's not spiritual to make money, and so when somebody makes a lot of money, we judge them. We judge them and we feel that they are greedy. Whenever somebody makes, when we see people in big corporates that make a lot of money, we feel that they're greedy. When, but yet our paradigm seems to support that. Our paradigm is full of big corporations that put profits before well-being, profits before health, profits before the, the condition of the planet, the environment. Our paradigm is full of that. How many of you have in the past at some time um, been guilt, are guilty of either judging somebody who's doing uh, spiritual work or following their heart but making money from doing that? And how many of you have, are, are actually currently involved in trying to do more spiritual work but are struggling financially? Yeah. It seems to go hand in hand. So if we have this belief that money is evil, money is the root of all evil, and if we also have this belief that by following our heart we can't make money, we are setting ourselves up to be broke. We are setting ourselves up to fail. Now here's the thing. Money in and of itself is neither good nor evil. It's neither spiritual or not spiritual. It's got nothing to do with money. It's us, the people. It's us. It's not about how much you make or don't make. It's about what you do with it. And it's about who you are. And when you judge money to be something evil, when you judge money as being something that's not spiritual, then no matter what you do, it'll be very hard for you to make money. When you judge people who make money as being evil, it'll be hard for you to make money. If you judge people who follow their heart or follow, uh, follow their calling or their path, and they earn money from doing it, and you judge them and say they're going for profits, then you will also be finding that that judgment is kind of pushing the money away from you. Because ideally, our paradigm 
should support people who make money from following their <coughs> calling and not support people who put profits before other people's well-being. We live in a paradigm where everybody loves <coughs> to buy big brand names for cheaper and cheaper prices, which forces all these big companies from hiring, um, from hiring sweatshops to produce their products. And our world <coughs> seems to be okay with that. We live in a world where sweatshops thrive where factories are underpaying their laborers and laborers work in terrible conditions and yet everybody out there are buying all these brands. And yet at the same time, we're criticizing people who are trying to help the planet. And we're criticizing them for earning a living. Here's what happens. If you, if you, are, a, um, if you are somebody who is a healer, who wants to follow your heart, who wants to help the planet, and if you are struggling to make money, and you believe that money is not spiritual, what ends up happening mm -hmm. is that if you're struggling to make money, and you, it means you are judging the money, it means you do not feel you're worthy, it means you feel that what you are offering the planet is not worthy of being rewarded, and what ends up happening is that you have to take a job that you don't like just to be able to pay the bills, and we will be deprived of experiencing your gift. So we need to support people like yourselves, all of you out there. Not only do we all need to support each other, but we are, you, all of you, all of us, also need to feel that our gift is worthy of being shared. And the problem arises in our ability to receive. When you are following your calling, you also have to allow yourself to receive. And many of us have a problem with receiving. We are able to, so how many of you here are actually healers in this room? Quite a few, quite a few. And do you find that as a healer, um, there are a lot of times where, I mean in fact all the time, you do it just because you want to help people, whether they can afford it or not. You just want to, see that's so beautiful. Now if people can afford to pay you, do you sometimes find that you still have trouble receiving money? Yes. You still have trouble receiving money. Even when the universe tries to pay you, you have trouble receiving money. One of the things that bothers me in this world is that um, I, I know people who are suffering from illnesses and they know that going the route of conventional medicine and drugs is not what they want. They know that this is not the route they would normally take. But if they take that route, their insurance companies pay for it. So they don't have to pay for it. If they go for alternative, which they know will benefit them more. If they go for healing, it will benefit them more. But they can't afford it. And because they can't afford it, there are a lot of angels who come and help them out and, and give it to them for free. But here's the thing. The people who give it to them for free are also struggling. If there was some way that even the people who give it to them for free if there was some way that they allowed themselves to receive in other ways, they could help more people. We could help a lot more people. Because when you think about it, when somebody is conscious, when somebody is aware, when somebody wants to help the planet, when you have someone who operates from the heart, who comes from the heart, who follows their calling, when you meet people like that, when I meet people like that, I want them to be financially successful. You know why? Because I trust where they're going to invest their money. I trust where they're going to put it. I want them to be financially successful. So instead of judging people who follow their calling and come from the heart, we need to really wish them well. We really need to wish them success. And when we do that, when we start feeling comfortable then we start to open ourselves up to receiving. Does that make sense? And the reason why our planet is in such dire straits is because the people who are more consciously aware 
are the very same people who think money is negative. And so they don't have the financial power to make a lot of the changes that are required. Because although we have the energetic power, which is wonderful, sometimes we, we have this block towards receiving. And this, if we can clear this block towards receiving, it's just one more element, one more door that opens that gives us a physical aspect, a physical tool that can actually help us to further make positive changes in the planet. There is no difference, like if, if we are all spiritual beings, you know, every single one of us are spiritual beings whether we realize it or not. So everything, so there's no separation, like if, um, it's not like if you make money, it makes you less spiritual. You are still a spiritual being. And when you realize you're spiritual, you will, lose, you will use your money differently because when you are coming from a place of fear, it's because you don't realize your connection to the spirit. You're coming from a place of fear and that's why they hoard money and that's why they put money or profits before health and well-being. But when you know you are connected, when you know you're a spiritual being, when you open that door and allow money to flow through you, you will allow it to flow through and use it for the good of yourself as well as the planet. I also always encourage people that when you make money, take care of yourself. Use it also to uplift and take care of yourself. Because when you are doing good work for the planet, you need to be in good shape, in good health, and, and feeling good about yourself to do the good work. And don't feel guilty about it. There are a lot of people who do. But you know how it is when you're flying on an airplane, the announcement that comes on about putting on the oxygen mask, put it on yourself first before helping others. And that's, I know that's so cliche now, but it's so obvious that if you can't breathe, you're gonna die. How are you gonna help others? So this is why it's so important to receive. It's so important to remove the judgment out of money because money is a form of exchange. It is a form of energy. It's a form of energy and it is here to stay for a while. And for a lot of people, when you don't have enough money, when you are struggling financially, um, it also depletes you of energy because you're not able to make a lot of choices you want to make. So I want to say here that in many cases, uh, even when people know what their purpose is, if they don't open their channel to receiving, it can prevent them from actually following their purpose because they're not able to receive the abundance and when they're not able to receive the abundance, they're forced to take a job just to pay the bills. So does that make sense what I said? Okay, so now what I'd love